Hi, and welcome to the Sengage video series, Teaching with Impact in Psychology. My name's Laura, and I'm the Senior Marketing Manager for our Psychology Learning Solutions here at Sengage. In these sessions, I'll be joined by teaching instructors across a range of psychology subjects. The discussions around some of the challenges facing the teaching community, tips and ideas for how to engage and support your students, an insight into the resources you can use to deliver your course and drive student success. So today I'm joined by Tim Rako. Tim is Reader in Psychology at King's College London with over 20 years experience of supervising research and teaching research methods to psychology students. He's also the co-author of the first Amir edition of Research Methods for the Behavioural Sciences. Dr. Roko uses a range of research strategies to examine human judgment and decision making. He's published over 50 research articles in more than 25 different journals, is an associate editor for the journal Thinking and Reasoning, and is a principal fellow of the Higher Education Academy. Tim, welcome. I'm so pleased you could join me today. Thank you for having me. So today's topic is making the most of online resources in psychology. Tim, it'd be great if you could start us off by talking about some of the resources you use in your own teaching and the benefits that you've seen. So in, in terms of online resources, we've, we've used a number of off-the-shelf products, so including Cengage products, so um, textbooks. Uh, we recently, in the last couple of years, switched over to uh, ensuring that our, our primary means of students accessing textbook content is through ebooks. Um, and then we also make use of CogLab, uh, which is um, gives us access to around 50 different uh, experimental uh, demonstrations that the students can do. Um, and then we also have um, online content that you know, we've created, curated ourselves. So um, pre-recorded lecture content, um, and then also on our virtual learning environment, um, you know, quizzes. So that, you know, that's the kind of the range of, of different things that, that we make use of um, within, you know, for example, the, the research methods modules that, that I lead on. Mm -hmm. And what do you think are the main benefits to you and your students of having the content online? You referenced your um, virtual learning environment, your you know, LMS, BLE, whatever um, different instructors refer to it as. And I assume you kind of organize it all through there and then um, guide your students to those different pieces of content. Yeah, so the, yeah, the structure and organization of, of the VLE is really key for that. Um, to kind of, you know, step students through you know, week by week um, those elements of their, their program that are um, online. Um, and I guess in terms of, of benefits, um, I don't think I've seen any, any benefits in terms of my time yet. You know, it is actually genuinely time consuming to, to produce um, these kind of materials. Um, you know, pre-recording a lecture takes a lot longer than giving a lecture. Um, yeah. So cool. one's not going to see benefits um, for a while in terms of, of time. Um, I think there's, there's quite a lot of efficiency benefits. So if you think about, um, if you're using students experiencing a piece of research as, as a prompt for some kind of you know, seminar type activity, which is the sort of thing we do quite a bit. And previously, you would, you would often give students you know, time within the class to sit and quietly do that activity. Um, it's a much better use of time to be able to give students access to that online before they come. And then you know, the real benefits of having students together in a group, which is they can discuss things as a group, they can learn with and from each other. Uh, you know, that, that time is, is then much better used. Definitely. That's something we hear a lot. You know, we, we talk to instructors all the time about their courses. And 
making the best use of that kind of that face-to-face scenario I know that's been it has been challenging um and and I think a lot of it hinges on on the preparation that the students have done to make sure that they are they're getting the best out of it as well um and you mentioned there about how you've made a movement um would your department to providing um ebooks for your students and I wondered whether that has um has that improved their their um tendency to do the readings that you've kind of assigned to them or kind of improve their engagement with the text having it ready there for them as an ebook um it's really difficult to say if i'm honest um yeah. you know because you know, we did previously provide that as a physical textbook um so um so you know it it got around the problem of you know somebody not having a textbook you know 200 yeah. students yeah. all heading for eight copies in the library um you know so you know we had a different way around that problem before um so yeah and i to be honest i haven't done the kind of formal evaluation of you know where the students are reading more or less when we we made that switch yeah well i think having um we've looked into it as you would imagine and we know that you know some students will prefer will prefer a, a printed textbook that they can have in their hands but lots of others will really value the the flexibility that um they have from an ebook and you know i would imagine that as you are integrating other um other online work as well it kind of gives them a maybe a more consistent experience if they're, if they're using different bits of online content yeah i mean i think and i, I certainly feel like i've seen the, the benefits of those of that flexibility with, with other online resources um so you know a few years ago i would often have said to students well you know in lectures unfortunately you're going at my pace you know, in practicals when you've got your kind of workbook and your activities you can go at your pace um but actually now they can they can go at their pace in yeah. in so many different contexts so um you know, and for for lecture content um you know if it's pre-recorded i don't have to make the kind of on the spot decision around well is it useful for me to go over this again you know i know that some students will really value that i know that some students will find that annoying um you know where does the balance lie is it worth me going over this again before we move on mm. um now individual students can can make that um decision by you know replaying bits you know going more quickly through elements of the lecture and and you know replaying you know certain elements multiple times um so there's there's a kind of um flexibility in the sense of, of individual tailoring of, of the experience by students to you know what they find easy what they find hard and so on so you've referenced there um a lot about you know the, the flexibility of of these different formats and do you think it's a bit kind of speculative but whether it's had um an effect on students maybe taking a bit more kind of responsibility for their learning you talked about how you know they can re-watch things they're finding tricky or, or move through things a bit quicker so do you think that sense of autonomy um helps with the kind of their overall experience of learning it's a big question yeah i don't i don't know if this is quite what you're getting at but certainly um you know one thing i noticed last year when we moved to having you know, a lot more kind of online content is is a is a bit of a shift so you know so you know for quite a lot of years i've had you know, a certain amount of pre-recorded uh, video type content um, and you know and have had some you know online quizzes you know, so yeah so those have been a part of my module for quite a lot of years um, but it was really noticeable um, last year that a lot of those 
elements that I'd used for four or five years got much more consistent use from the students. Uh, and I guess that might be because, you know, probably there'd be more care with kind of, you know, where it was positioned and how it was signposted through the virtual learning environment. So you know, it wasn't seen as, as a kind of extra. Mm. It was seen as an integral part of the, um, of the program because there were more things of that nature. Yeah. So it, I guess maybe it's seen as more mainstream, as it were. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I have seen that extra degree of engagement with certain online resources, um, you know, which I've been trying to use for a few years, and they just seem to have been used more, more yeah. successfully or more heavily by the students um, in the last year or so. Yeah, I think you've definitely tapped into something there about them being, it's the impression of it feeling more mainstream, more expected, part of the course, you know, just something that you you, you should make use of. Um, I think that's something we've heard, we've heard quite a lot. So you mentioned there that your students have access to the ebook now, and um, I think that's through the Cengage MindTap platform that they're accessing that. So I wondered if you, there was anything you could add about um yeah, how they access it or whether they use any of the other resources uh, within the MindTap. Yeah, so so this past year and this, this past year only, students have, have been accessing um, two textbooks for their research methods modules. So um, a statistics textbook by David Howell and then a, um, more of a research design textbook by Gravetta and Fosano uh, and also Coglat as well through MindTap. Um, so... Um, because that's just this past year, you know, we haven't kind of gone all in with um, recommending or requiring that students use the, the kind of additional content um, over and above the, the, the actual text itself. Um, but I, I do know that, that some students do make use of that. Um, so there were some of the quizzes that... Um, in particular, that a number of students have, have done, so they're kind of learning checks and so on, and they have been making some use of that. Great, the very kind of proactive ones that want to kind of seek out that bit more information. And, and yeah, I, I assume so, or, you know, I guess people who, you know, people vary in terms of how much they kind of like to check how they're getting on. Uh, yeah. and generally, most of us kind of like to know how we're doing on something. Um, but yeah, certainly there's, there's been a certain amount of use of, of those quizzes that for the kind of end of topic or end of chapter mm. quizzes. Thanks, Tim. Those were some really interesting um, insights into both your experience and your student experience of using, you know, these various different bits of online content. I hope everyone has found this episode useful. And if you'd like to watch some of our other videos for more topics, please just click on the link below to access the rest of the series. Or if you have ideas for anything you would like covered or you'd like to get involved, please get in touch via our website.